Okay, good morning to everybody. We're going to start. Okay, good morning and welcome to the IAA seminar program. And today, I am sure this morning all of you have seen a new press, press release, yes, uh, showing the analysis of the observations performed with the Even Horizon Telescope in the year 2018. This is the second year that we have an EHT campaign. In fact, this is important because you remember the first images of the black holes in May 87 and also in Sagittarius A star. But the, the fact that we are having already a second epoch observations and second epoch images also is that we, it, it permits us yes, to perform the comparison of the results of 2000, uh, 2017 and 2018. And in fact, check the predictions from general relativity, which is really fantastic. The presentation today will be given by the EHD group of the Instituto Astrofísica Andalucía. You know that the EHD is an international collaboration with a large number of institutions from many different countries. Uh, but I want to mention that the participation of the group here in the IAA, led by Jose Luis Gómez, that is here, has been really very relevant. I, I would say that has been fundamental in the results that have been presented in this paper that has been published today. In fact, you will notice that easily during the talk. Let me, in fact, congratulate the team, congratulate Jose Luis as leader of the team, congratulate all the team, all my colleagues, for because of the results they have obtained. That they really, I mean, they, they are fantastic. And I am sure you will enjoy them the meeting. I have to excuse myself because I'm taking part just now in the meeting of the Commission Nacional de Astronomía. I just skipped the meeting for five minutes and I have to come back now. But you are in the best hands and I am sure you're going to enjoy the, the, the presentation. Then, Jose Luis, the floor is yours. Thank, thank you thanks. very much, and John, and thank you very much for taking the time to yeah. uh, to <laughs> like, like, and join us. Okay, so uh, it is really a pleasure to be with you here and uh, we are having, okay, let me see. Okay, got it. Okay. So uh, as Anchon mentioned, uh, we are very proud to have the second epoch observations of uh, the black hole at M87. And uh, I, I like to just start uh, the presentation by introducing the, the, the EHT group at the Instituto Astrofisica Andalucía, and then they are going to do the actual presentation. And we are, we are gonna have contributions from people from, the, from Los Angeles and, and from uh, and from Korea and so on. So uh, the group is formed uh, currently by it, uh, myself. As uh, I'm also the vice chair of the Science Council of the Even Horizon Telescope. Uh, Totaro Moriyama, who is one of the coordinators of the Imaging Working Group. Fale Trayanu, who is now the European Outreach Coordinator for the Even Horizon Telescope. She has been particularly busy today in the past days, as you may imagine. And Fernando Fuentes, you all know him. He is our movie maker. He was the lead of the first uh, attempt to get uh, movies of a that we published in 2022. And uh, now uh, we have also uh, new members, starting from uh, Mariana Foski, uh, that uh, he is also uh, contributing to the movie making of, uh, of, uh, of the EHD. We will uh, hear a little bit more at the end of the presentation about uh, the, uh, the next projects of the EHD and the, and the first attempt to get uh, movies of black holes. And then we have Rohan Dahale, uh, Rohan has been also instrumental for the first uh, uh, imaging using a new technique uh, called Conray. Actually, uh, I'm very, very happy and very proud to say that uh, there is, a, uh, as you have seen, several press releases in, in different countries, and we have a general press release for the Edwin Horizon Telescope. You can check this press release in the Edwin Horizon Telescope webpage, and uh, Rohan Dahale has been highlighted in that press release uh, thanks to his contribution, Rohan and three more people. So we are really very proud of the work that Rohan has done for these uh, results. And of course, we have uh, Teresa Toscano, you all know her. She has been also uh, helping a lot with the imaging for the uh, for these next observations. And Anton Alberti, that you know, and he, uh, he is, uh, besides being the, the IA director, he's also a member of the ambush panels of the EHD. So, I'm trying to. Is it? Yeah. Just no. Open on the slide. I'm afraid it does not. Click mouse. Click in that. Okay. Let's use the mouse. Okay. Then I, we have also a new PhD student, uh, Ali Shen, 
Uh, she is going to, to join us very soon. She, she is now in her own country in, in China, and she is coming in the next weeks, and she is uh, just joining the EHD. But I want to, to make a special mention to the former members of the of the group. Uh, those are Ilya Cho. He is uh, back in Korea, in Kasi, and actually he is going to talk from Kasi today and to show us some of the results and some uh, uh, that we have obtained from the EHD. Wan Yao Zhao, uh, who is now at Max Planck Institute in the Fort Astronomy in Bonn, and, and Rocco Lico, who is now at Bologna. So, and uh, with this, I say I pass uh, the, this uh, to I think the Teresa. You are next. <laughs> ah, oh no, actually, yes, I have all of this extra slide. Oh my god! All right. So here, I wanted to highlight a little bit of each one of the different contributions. You will see this also through all the presentation, and Rohan in particular is going to highlight this. But I want to highlight the, these six people. They, they are really fundamental and instrumental for this observation. I think we have to be extremely proud of the work of the EHT. Uh, we are now one of the most relevant uh, groups uh, in the whole EHT. In, in Europe, we are one of the, the three uh, largest and most relevant. And as you will see later, we have used many different techniques for getting the images of black holes. And uh, we, I'm very proud to say that uh, out, uh, out of the five limiting techniques we have used, in the house, we have been leading or instrumental in four of those techniques. So these images really were made here in the house, as we did for SciJ and M87. And in particular, Rohan led uh, uh, the imaging analysis of the new Bayesian method uh, uh, called Conrad. Ilya Cho was uh, 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 also the lead of the imaging for, for this map in EHD imaging. Mariana Foschi and Teresa Toscano has been also contributing significantly to each team. Talia Trayanou, who uh, also led uh, collect the comparison with the 2017 data, and Kotaro Moriyama, who joined uh, our group a uh, few months ago. Uh, he has been leading and, uh, on, on the generation of the synthetic data set that we have used to validate uh, the, the simulations, and uh, also uh, was the leader of the Smiley team. So with this, I, I pass it uh, to uh, Kotaro, who is going to give us an introduction of the results. There you go, Kotaro. Then you will have to use the... Uh, the Thank you so much for the introduction, Jose. So uh, today, I and Ilje Cho, who is the next speaker, uh, talk about, first talk about the 2017 M87 milestone. And then, uh, based on the uh, back, uh, this kind of background, we would like to uh, demonstrate the 2018 M87 result. First, uh, let's focus on the uh, 2017 EHT observation. So EHT collaboration is uh, involving over 18 institutions and 300 researchers globally, and focusing on the uh, science and observation in the vicinity of the black hole. As listed here, the EHT observation utilizes the eight worldwide telescope at the six different locations and constructs the virtual uh, Earth scale telescope as shown in the right figure. So uh, this is a uh, uh, main uh, main motivation for EHT and uh, and, the motiv uh, and our objective is to detect the compact feature like a black hole shadow as I demonstrate here. So um, general relativity predicts the strong gravitational field bends the radiation from the surrounding plasma and forming the black hole shadow. So left panel demonstrates the radiation from the surrounding plasma and categorized with uh, uh, two important components, cyan and black rays. Here, cyan rays are bended around the black hole due to the strong gravitational field and then reaches to the distant observer at the right-hand side. But for black, cow, uh, black rays, cannot uh, arrive to the distant observer because which was captured by the event horizon at the center of the black hole. So this contrast between cyan and black uh, rays struck, uh, provides a black hole shadow as we can see in the 2017 observation. EHT pro, uh, has two important targets for black hole shadow detection. First one is the M87 at the nearby radio galaxy and the Sagittarius star at the, our galactic center. And if we perform the numerical simulation and investigate the corresponding size of the black hole shadow, as we can see in the right panel, the corresponding diameter is larger than that of the EHT, shown in the CM bus. And based on the EHT observation with this resolution, 
we expected to have this kind of Brewer feature due to the EHT nominal resolution. Let's move on to the more detail of the uh, structure of the photon ring morphology. So um, the rays, uh, carry, uh, rays around the black hole carries different information depending on the, uh, the number of the times rotating around the black hole. So first, we would like to focus on the, uh, the right hand side movie and uh, demonstrate the detail. So if we focus on the radiation, uh, less than one, less than half rotation, it provides a nearby plasma information and a strong gravitational lensing effect as shown in this movie. So it is not only for the ring structure, but also the spiral feature of the accretion flow. But if we focus on the photon component, the more than half rotation, we can start to see the black hole space-time information. If we focus on the uh, corresponding, uh, corresponding figure, we can see the thin -like, ring like feature, which strongly depends on the black hole space time. We can also see this kind of thin ring like morphology with more than one rotation photon ring component, but it is a little dimmer than that of the N1 component. So in this way, our next target is to detect the N1 component to check the, uh, the black hole space time information. EHT currently observes the, uh, the all combined photon ring component from zero, n equal zero to n equal uh, two, three, or four, five, and we can get this kind of beautiful movie with EHT observation. So as uh, the decomposition of the uh, photon ring morphology can be addressed with the future EHT, and which will be demonstrated at the end of the, this seminar. So uh, black hole spacetime itself is uniquely described with the black hole mass and black hole spin, which is a rotation magnitude of the spin black hole. And if we introduce the black hole spin, the corresponding photon black hole shadow is quite different each other. So if we focus on the non-spinning black hole as shown in the left panel, the corresponding black hole shadow is symmetric from top to bottom bottom side. But if we introduce a spinning black hole, the corresponding radiation is uh, provides a frame tracking effect around the black hole, and this provides a, a counterclockwise black hole, and the corresponding radiation is strongly bended around the event horizon. And it provides a, a little smaller black hole shadow size and the asymmetric model, morphology of the, black, uh, of the black hole shadow. And based on this kind of effect, including the, our viewing angle, the plus minus 4% size difference between the black hole spin and the viewing angle. So uh, based on the, this kind of theoretical background, we would like to first uh, demonstrate the 2017 M87 result. We have uh, we had uh, three important milestones. So first one is, of course, we obtained the, uh, the horizon scale uh, image morphology of M87 and Sagesta, and which provides uh, a quite a beautiful black hole ring structure, which is consistent with general relativity. And importantly speaking, and, and the, the Sagesta and M87 mass ranging from millions to billions of solar mass. So uh, this kind of multiple observation enable us to uh, perform the GR, GR general relativity test among various large scale of the black hole mass scale. And the second thing is we also perform the uh, quasi simultaneous multi frequency observation and investigate demonstrated that the black hole powers active galactic nuclei. It is also important for the astrophysical problem. And as, uh, as described in the next speaker, Ilje Cho, we also perform the polarization horizon scale image and obtain the accurate measurement of the some accurate measurement of the accretion flow property and the background magnetic field structure. So um, let's move on to the 2017 M87 non-polarization image result. So uh, we, uh, as a detailed thing, we have a four important point. First, we obtain the 42 microsecond ring diameter, which is consistent with the general relativity prediction. And the second thing is, uh, uh, it is, um, it is a strong, strong constraint of the black hole mass. So the, uh, the size of the diameter is mainly depend on the black hole mass and distance from the Earth. So uh, based on this morphology, we uh, constrain the, uh, the M87 black hole mass. And the third thing is the ring stability. As shown in the left panel, from April 5th to April 11th, 
we obtained the quite similar uh, lingual morphology in 2017. It is uh, strongly uh, consistent with the general relativity prediction because uh, black hole mass does not significantly change with the supermassive black hole. And also, this asymmetry provides the information of the black hole rotation. For instance, if we focus on the uh, clockwise and the counterclockwise black hole case, the corresponding simulation is shown in the right panel. And if we focus on the clockwise uh, black hole rotation, the brightness region uh, uh, located at the bottom, bottom component, but counterclockwise black hole predicts the upper brightness component. So based on the consistency between theory and observation, we start to see the uh, black hole rotation morphology for M87. And finally, I would like to uh, quickly recap the multi-frequency observation. So in addition to the 2017 EHT observation, uh, multi quasi multi simultaneous multi-frequency observation was performed and obtained the, uh, the various kind of jet to uh, photon ring, ring morphology uh, based on the VLB observations. So this result uh, demonstrates the black hole such as M87 powers active galactic nuclei. So this is also important for the astrophysics. And the more exciting news for linear polarization will be provided by next speaker, Ilse Cho. So I would like to pass the, uh, the speak, uh, speaker to Ilse Cho. OK. Uh, uh, yep. Uh, Ilse, uh, is it OK for you? Uh, sure. So you are gonna you're gonna share the same screen, right? Oh yep. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to move on to your slide. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Kotaro. Um. Uh, yes, I'm Yu Cho at Kashi and Yonsei University in Korea, and I wasn't uh, IAAC sick until last October. So it is really glad to meet everyone here. Um. Anyway, as uh, Kotaro introduced, uh, here I will briefly uh introduce the EHT polarization results towards uh the M87. Um. So in 2021. Uh, the magnetic field structure at event horizon scale of uh, M87 was revealed for the uh, first time. Uh, here, uh, the figures show the linear polarization pattern, uh, which are kind of the spiral-like, uh, and that's uh, like consistent across four different epochs as shown in the middle figures. Uh, next page, please. Okay. Yeah, so based on these patterns, uh, we compared the possible the uh the magnetic field structures, and this supports uh the poloidal magnetic field structure. For instance, uh, if the magnetic fields are the toroidal, uh, which has been shown in the left side of this right figure, then the linear polarization pattern is expected, like radial, as shown. Um, uh, so the poloidal uh, magnetic field is kind of the combination of the radial and the vertical components. Um, so uh, that is uh, what we have revealed from the uh, polarization, the results, uh, the structure, and then the fractional polarization was found up to 15%, uh, and the magnetic field st uh, strength is uh, in between 1 to 30 Gauss. Uh, next page, please. Um, yeah, in addition, like, uh, these results support uh, the particular type of the equation flow model named magnet uh, magnetically arrested disk, so-called MET. Um, there are two different branches of the equation flow models. So one is MET here, and another one is named SANE. Um, the MET model has uh, the strong and ordered magnetic field, so it is easy to produce the strong jet, while uh, the same model has weak and turbulent uh, the magnetic field. So uh, based on this comparison uh, with um, the, the GRMHT simulation models, uh, the observed polarization results from the EHT supports the MED scenario for the M87. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so in addition to the linear polarization uh, in 2023, the results of the circular polarization was also published. Um, um, due to uh, the weak nature of the circular polarization, uh, unfortunately, the morphology of the um, the circular polarization pattern is still uncertain across different even even across the different methods. Uh, but uh, it was possible to put some kind of constraints of the upper limit of it, and 
uh, still, uh, again, the remarkably uh, from the circular projection as well, uh, the result supports the, the MED scenario, which is consistent uh, with the linear polarization results. So these are the brief summary of the polarization of the results towards the M87 so far. And then we can now move on to the next um, the uh, observations. All right, so thanks for this wonderful background information. So let us now properly introduce the new observations of 2018, as I'm sure you're all excited about. So first of all, uh, you just went through the results of 2017. For the 2018 campaign, you observed in April, from April 18 to April 29th, but the days where we got the data are April 21st, 22nd, 25th, and 28th, with nine telescopes which is different, slightly different than the previous observations. Because first of all, we added one telescope, which is vitally important, the Greenland Telescope, GLT, uh, which is over there. You can see it in the red circle in the North Pole. Second of all, we doubled the bandwidth of the 2017 observations from two to four bands, which actually increases the sensitivity and improves it by a factor of square root of two. And third of all, the uh, telescope LMT improved its sensitivity by increasing, increasing its effective diameter from 32.5 meters to its full capacity at 50 meters. Now, uh, especially I would like to uh, emphasize the GLT telescope because of the following. First of all, because it will improve the UV coverage, which for you, uh, for those of you who are not that familiar with, uh, with this uh, terminology, it's basically, uh, we are sampling the spatial frequencies in the Fourier domain, and uh, later on my uh, colleague will explain further on that. And you can see that the GLT uh, baselines with the rest of the telescopes, as uh, signaled in red, those are not just, of course, in the south north-south direction, it's fulfilling a lot of the plane, but it's not important just because it's uh, more information, which is great, but also because it's completely new information, since we have never been able to sample that orientation of the map. So that is great. And uh, the thing is that it will be observed in band three and four. So these bands will be key uh, for the image. And I would like to point out that this UV coverage is uh, the best one and the one that will be used in the image that we'll show uh, later on, which is the April 21st. But I would also like to mention that the second best day is April 25th, but we did, could not be able to use it because there were some coherent losses and some other problems that will be mentioned later on in the presentation by Mariana. So, uh, did I click? Am I not clicking? Okay, right. So uh, lastly, I would like to also say that these uh, new data was also recorded in geopolarization, which of course will come up in a later paper. And also that as always, we, uh, we also have these issues that do not like, but it's normal, which is the bad weather. And in this case, it made it a little bit more complicated to uh, deal with this data. And sometimes we got some uh, signal to noise ratio a bit worse than 2017, but Luckily, that's what the GLT made up for. So also the LMT had a late start, which is uh, the reason why you can see in the in the picture on, on my left, but you're right. The gray points is the 2017 uh, observations, so you can compare. And uh, uh, there's a difference in the UV coverage, and this is due to this late start and bad weather. But nonetheless, uh, with this new data, we can actually probe better the nulls in the image, which you can see in the visibility amplitude ones, where we can see uh, plotted on a, a dotted line. This is a vessel function, which represents uh, the, tra the Fourier transform of a perfect ideal ring. And the uh, gray points are the previous observations and the colorful points are the new ones. So if you check actually the purple ones, the purple dots are the ones that uh, are probing better this, this, this null. Uh, so all in all, I just wanted to finish this part of the observations by saying that you're going to see that this is not just another image, but this multi-year observation will actually provide an independent 
set of uh, snapshot of information for the black hole, which will allow us to constrain better the intrinsic structure uh, of the variability and equation flow, and of course, refine those uh, physical tricky parameters of the black hole. So without further ado, I will uh, give entrance to the next speaker, Rohan, who will tell us all about how to get there. Perfect. So uh, now that we are already have some kind of introduction of what has been in the past and what it really means with the new observations, I think we should really talk about uh, how to get to the main results. And, and uh, here I want to quickly uh, mention that what does it mean from going from taking data to actually making the images? And so uh, I think Teresa has already mentioned that what we have is like telescopes all over the world, which, which form our instrument array. And what we are recording is this interferometer response of, of these uh, pair of telescopes. Or, and, and what we do is that once we have this uh, interferometer response co collected, which samples the spatial frequencies, as she mentioned, we, we take all this data and, and go to a central location and correlate the data. Once we have the data correlated, now we have to deal with some calibration, which can be like in atmospheric effects or the instrumental effects. And only after that, the data is calibrated, we can actually move on to do the imaging. Uh, so, uh, so we actually use two different uh, calibration pipelines to make sure that there's consistency between data. And I think it's important to, to realize here that first of all, uh, the data is actually poorly sampled in the, the Fourier domain. And, and we are actually pushing the limits of VLPI here. We are, we are observing at one millimeter. And, and uh, that's exactly why I think we should, we should be very careful with what the data we're using. And that's why we are using multiple methods for this. So we actually, when we observe the data, we have both the amplitudes and the phases. Okay, we have this data now. And now we can do two things with it. Uh, we can now go to the, the image domain and make images of it. Or we can just directly fit the data and then figure out our parameters of interest, uh, for example, the diameter. Uh, okay, so I'll first start with speaking about what does it mean to do interferometric imaging. And what that really means is that once we have this uh, sparse measurements in the Fourier domain, uh, which is actually an incompletely uh, sampled Fourier transformation of the actual source that we are observing. Uh, uh, one important thing I want to realize here with the movie that I just uh, displayed here is that since we actually have this, this uh, sparse measurements, uh, if we are not careful about what really physically means, we can actually get like whatever we want. For example, uh, a teapot that was just showed here. And, and uh, so we actually need like robust imaging algorithms uh, physically motivated uh, and, and different algorithms to, to make sure that we are, what we are seeing is actually what we are seeing. And once we have uh, this Im Im imaging algorithms, only then we can actually go on to, to seeing what images uh, that we think. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, uh, describing different imaging algorithms that we used in, the, in this paper. And, and two of them are uh, a clean imaging algorithm and, uh, and an RML imaging, which is the regularized maximum likelihood imaging uh, algorithm. So I think many people here might be aware of what is what is means by clean imaging, especially the radio astronomers. Uh, so in this way, it's it's like a more inverse approach. We actually have the data in the Fourier domain, and what we do is we just uh, take the Fourier transformation of it and then replace in the image domain by its uh, point source components. Eventually, uh, we also try to solve for the the the, the gains at these telescopes. And we do this uh, process iteratively until the image gets better and better and, and matches the data, uh, uh, describes the, the data very well. So this has been a more uh, 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 traditional approach that we have used uh, and it has been used in decades. It's a very robust approach. But since we are actually uh, using a data that we are pushing the limits of, 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 uh, of uh, VLPI here at one way meter, we actually, uh, in, in uh, 2019 paper, we actually uh, had developed our own algorithms for imaging and, and uh, namely ESTM and Smiley. And these are like a, a MEM method, like maximum entropy methods. And this is more like a different approach than the, mm -hmm. the previous one. Here we take more like a forward approach. We start with the initial image and then we take the Fourier transformation of that. And then we compare that with the, uh, the actual data that, that we have. And we, we try to minimize the difference between uh, the, the, uh, the, the image that we are creating versus the data that we have. And, for that, we actually regulate how, how to uh, get, get an image by, by motivated by physics. So for example, we actually regulate this, this minimization by saying that, okay, the image should be non-negative for sure. And then the image should be smooth where it should be. So by using all this, this uh, uh, physical information, we can actually uh, reach to the image that would best describe the data. Uh, that would be uh, the difference between two, two of these algorithms. And here, if we just iteratively go towards the minimization, 
here also we can find an image. Uh, this is from the 2017 observations though. Okay, so another approach that we can take by uh, uh, working with this data is like a Bayesian approach. So we ha actually have some observations taken and then we want to find the best, uh, like we want to find the distribution of models, the probability distribution of models that they describe the data. So what we do is we just uh, uh, figure out a likelihood uh, uh, distribution, which is like, what is the distribution of the model, uh, uh, distribution of the observations given a particular model. And then we also give some prior information of the parameters of the model. And from there, we can actually uh, uh, sample the, the distribution of the, uh, the probability of images uh, given the data. Uh, so for that, actually we perform first of all imaging, and for that, we use two different imaging algorithms, Themis and Comrade. Uh, so Themis uh, has actually been used in the past. Uh, uh, Comrade uh, algorithm was uh, uh, actually used in the SAGE papers as well for a different uh, purpose like modeling. And so we use both of these uh, methods, but we also did something like modeling, as I mentioned before. We can directly fit in the Fourier domain rather than making an image. And for that, we actually used many different models like a crescent or a ring or a double or disk. And what we find, found is that actually the ring or crescent models are more preferred. <laughs> Uh, 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 for our data, we what we can actually do is also do something hybrid. We can we can fit some geometrical model and the, uh, we can fit the background with with uh, uh, pixels, and that would be more hy hybrid approach that can, that was also taken by the the Themis algorithm. Okay, so now that we actually have the methods briefly described of what they do, I think before applying to the data, what we should do really do is uh, validate the, validate the methods. Like how well do they really work before we actually do it in the real observations. And for that, what we did is that we uh, went ahead and created uh, lots of different synthetic data of different uh, models that we can have. And by visual inspections, what, what we see here is that, uh, just look at the points in, in orange, which are the actual data and the purple points, which are the models. Uh, visually, it looks like it can be anything. I mean, uh, so what is important is that we, our algorithm should, should be able to recover the differences and all different, uh, all different synthetic data. So uh, for the work of three of the uh, imaging methods that I mentioned previously, which is the clean imaging diff map and RML imaging e EHTM and Smiley, uh, as you can see here, they very well reconstruct the ground truth here. And I think that that's, it's, it's remarkable how, how they do this for all, all different kinds of models. Uh, we also saw that the, the Bayesian approach uh, uh, algorithms, which is the Themis and Comrade, and they also do this quite well. So one important thing to note here is that the, we are only showing one sample of all the probability distribution of the Bayesian methods here. Okay, so now that we actually created all these images, we end the end, we, we checked actually how many images we made. We, we made close to about 1 million images. Okay, so it, it's really a, 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 an impressive, uh, uh, I think, thing that we see here uh, from all the different reconstructions. Okay, so now in the past, I've mentioned that there were uh, uh, parameters that we need for all the clean imaging and RM imaging, but uh, before applying to the data, we should really choose the parameters or, or select the ones that actually work well uh, for the real data. How do we do that? We actually uh, chose one of these four models and, and chose only those parameters that simultaneously work the best recovering the ground truth. And uh, uh, so uh, this, this is how we chose the parameters. Then we use these parameters and applied on the rest of the data and, and mm -hmm. uh, did a method validation right over there. And, and for the rest of the method with the Bayesian approach, all of them were just like a, a method validation. And uh, that's how we uh, uh, say that, okay, now the methods are actually working. And I think right after this, we should now jump into, okay, the actual data, because I think that's, that's uh, the, the next important task. Okay, so uh, just another black hole. I guess by now everyone has seen this uh, and everyone is wondering why are these guys making an image of black hole and again, again, the same source, the same black hole, uh, and how much, how much are they going to keep doing this? And for how long are you guys going to keep doing this? I mean, seriously, I also keep wondering why are we doing this sometimes? <laughs> okay, uh, but, but the, the joke aside, I think what is uh, uh, important is that, as, as Teresa also mentioned while taking the new observations, is that uh, we are continuously improving our array and instrument. And, and what, what helps us with that is that we, when we try to uh, uh, extract our parameters for GR and, and general relativity, uh, we are actually putting better constraints on it. So we are refining our constraints on it by taking more observations. Therefore, that's one of the reasons. But uh, let's let's put the image of 2017 beside, alongside this 2018 image that we took. Uh, what do we see here? So I think one of the most remarkable things here, uh, that, that as expected, the, the ring size is the same as that we saw in 2017. And why is this important? I think it's important because, uh, well, MD7 has low accretion rate, meaning the matter is going slowly and, and the mass 
of emetocytes actually it's increasing very slowly over the lifespan of, of, of human history uh, so uh, uh, gr as, as as expected says that if the mass is the same similar or same the ring size should be the same and i think it's 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 a pr living proof that it's actually the the same size and and and, and that's how we tested gr but uh, uh, well just a funny thing let's assume that if it knows not of the same size I think that would be one bigger deal, right? Mm -hmm. Because we, we would not have uh, the same size. The GR is not working anymore. Okay, I think that's that's the Nobel Prize. Right? <laughs> uh, okay, uh, that, that's uh, about the ring size. But one other important difference that we see right here is that the, the brightest spot has moved uh, uh, counterclockwise by about 30 degrees. And uh, I think uh, this, this important observation is uh, really going to help us refine our uh, uh, theoretical model, especially to better understand black hole accretion. And I think in in the next uh, presentations you will you will understand a better how how we can extract information about this and how we can refine our theories from this information. Okay, uh, so the image that I just showed you here uh, was actually an, an an average image of all the different methods of imaging that I had showed you guys uh, before, and, and I I think it's important to and it's it's amazing to see here that all the different methods are actually recovering exactly like more or less exactly the same thing. Uh, it, it's quite consistent with each other. And the other important thing that I want to point out here is that if you see the, the names in bold, and as also Jose mentioned previously, uh, out of the five imaging algorithms, four of them were done in-house right here. And I, I don't want to repeat the names again because they were mentioned quite some time by now. Uh, I just wanted to highlight it again. Okay, uh, the other thing that I want to do mention is that other than modeling, uh, imaging, we also did modeling, which I mentioned previously. So it, the, the best model that we had, if you just blur them to the, the nominal resolution of the, the instrument, uh, we we actually see the results are quite consistent with the imaging methods as well. And and, and on the top, I, I you can see that they use this image actually average of just the, the first uh, five imaging methods. Okay, we, we, we do have the images now, okay, but yeah, we can't be happy with pretty pictures, right? We have to do some physics with it. Uh, so now that we have the images, I think we should really start extracting uh, the parameters that we, we want to, to test uh, our theories. And, and I think uh, uh, one of them could be like diameter, but, but I think we should really move on to, to hearing from uh, Mariana, who is now joining us uh, from Caltech. It's 3 a.m. over there. She's making a lot of effort to join this. Uh, and she's going to talk us through how we can really extract the, the parameters of interest from here. Uh, so uh, let's uh, actually, uh, can you turn on your uh camera mariana yes i, I should be here okay mm. okay uh let's put on the slides okay you can okay have it. great thank you ron so just like ron was saying uh once the all the different imaging methods and modeling methods have provided the best fit images and models the next interesting step is to perform feature extraction so what do we mean by that um, so since it is clear that from all our imaging results, we have a ring-like structure in the images, what we would like to do is to quantitatively characterize the features of this ring. And uh, next, please. Oh. Okay, so in particular, we would like to estimate the, uh, the <laughs> diameter. <laughs> The width, uh, the position angle, uh, which is the point of the maximum brightness along the ring, uh, the brightness asymmetry, and the ratio between the brightness of the ring and the brightness of the shadow at the center of the image. So in this work, we are uh, performing this feature extraction using two different methods. Uh, next, please. Uh, the first one is called the ring extractor, extractor and it's a method based on the assumption that we uh, already have a ring-like structure in the image, and it quantifies the, um, the geometrical features based on definition defined on the discretized image. We also use a second method, which is called variational image domain analysis, uh, which is a Bayesian approach that uh, optimizes the parameters of an analytic model and fits this model to the image. And then the features are extracted as the parameters of the best fitted model. So let's uh, see what are the results uh, that are coming out of these two methods. You can see them in the plot on the right, and let me guide you through it because it's a bit uh, uh, chaotic otherwise. So in the first line, we are showing uh, the estimations of the diameter. In the second line, the estimation of the width of the ring. And in the third line, the position angle. 
The column in gray uh, showing uh, results for April 21st, while the column in white results for April 25th. So as Teresa was saying earlier, uh, the coverage that we had on April 25th uh, is, um, is worse than the coverage than we have on April 21st. And this is why we have uh, a wider standard deviation and a wider uncertainty on the estimation for those values. So, so let's focus on April 21st. Uh, as you can see, um, the different points are showing the estimations for different bands and different imaging methods and different feature extraction algorithm. And they're all uh, providing very consistent uh, results. The only outlier that we see is um, in the case of the DIFMAP imaging pipeline for the estimation of the width. But this is explained by the fact that the width of the ring depends on the effective uh, resolution of the image. And since DIFMAP is the only method that is not able to achieve super resolution, it will provide a wider width compared to the others. So summing up these results, we have an estimate of the diameter to be around 42 micro seconds, which is in agreement with the results that we had in 2017. We measure a position angle of 215 degrees, which is instead a clear shift from the 180 degrees that we had in 2017. Uh, we measure a brightness asymmetry between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4, which indicates that we actually don't have a perfect ring, but we have more of a crescent shape. And we measure a fractional central brightness between 0 and 0 0.5, uh, indicating that we actually see a shadow at the center of the black hole image. So actually, this is not the only way we can extract the uh, um, features of the ring, but another method, uh, next slide, is by performing direct geometrical modeling. So this is what uh, Ron was mentioning earlier, talking about uh, the modeling pipelines, uh, because indeed we can uh, uh, have a parameterized analytic function that is um, describing a crescent or a ring and optimize the parameters of this function directly in the visibility domain. So not in the image domain, but in the Fourier transform of the image, which is where we have the actual data and extract the features of this ring as the best fit parameters. So we have two pipelines, uh, which are Temis and Comrade that perform this kind of, uh, uh, of analysis and they can fit different models. So not only ring models, but also Gaussians and disks. And by, the, by looking at the posterior distributions of these fits, we see that there is a clear preference for uh, ring-like shapes. So here in the images, you're seeing uh, the, the three best fit uh, uh, models results. So all these uh, in, in okay, so all the um, all the results from the direct uh, modeling are shown in these plots. In the top left, you can see uh, results for the diameter. In the top right, the for the width, uh, center left for the position angle, and so on for all the parameters. Since the these results are very in very much in agreement with the ones I showed before, I will not uh, spend too much time on the plot. But I would like to highlight the fact that the, the values estimated for 2018, which you can see in blue, red, and orange, uh, are very much in agreement with the ones we, we measured in 2017, which are shown in black, except for the position angle that is showing a clear shift, and also uh, for the diameter, which is showing a slight increase. Um, but this is due to the fact that uh, uh, with geometric modeling, we can fit very thin ring uh, that correspond to a slightly a wider diameter compared to a blurry thick ring. Uh, so combining together um, the different uh, uh, results from different feature extraction methods, different pipelines, uh, we can have an estimate of, uh, next slide please, of the ring diameter and the position angle. So we have a ring diameter of 43.3 microseconds for 2018 which is compatible within the error bars with the estimation of 42 from 2017 and a position angle of uh, 208 degrees, which is a clockwise uh, counterclockwise shift uh, compared to the estimation that we had in 2017. So now Talia will uh, explain to us uh, uh, a bit more about the interpretations uh, of, these, uh, of these extracted parameters. Thank you, Mariana. <laughs> so as Mariana mentioned, uh, I explained to us, we measured the, the diameter and uh, now we need to interpret it. 
So for uh, passing from the observational quantities to a, a physical scale of a black hole, uh, it's very important because is this the step that we need to take in order to uh, test theoretical uh, theoretical models and theoretical predictions, for instance, by general relativity. So for this reason, we uh, we are we use the most uh, a common physical scale that describes best uh, uh, massive uh, uh, supermassive black hole, which is the uh, gravitational radius. So the gravitational radius is yeah okay. So uh, the gravitational radius theoretically is defined uh, uh, as a function of the black hole mass, the distance from the Earth, and uh, the gravitational constant, but also can uh, ex uh, can be pre uh, predict uh, general relativity uh, is symmetric for general relativity, so can uh, give us uh, a, a, a quantity that can reflect different physical processes of the uh, of the black hole for instance the spin of the black hole and the the orientation and and so on so uh, the theoretically the value of the gravitational radius is uh, half about half of the Schwarzschild radii that Kotaro mentioned earlier however because again as Kotaro nicely explained to us we don't. Uh, we are not able to see yet the n two ring or n one ring that are described by the general relativity and are connected with the gravitational radius. But we see n zero, which n zero is a blending of n two, n one, and the astrophysics that uh, uh, takes place in this region, and also lensing. The light is from these rings is lensed there. So the expected diameter of this uh, of the gravitational radius is uh, uh, increased by a factor of five from all these effects. So for the N1 ring, we the expected parameter theoretically is about 10.4 uh, Schwarz radii. But how can we link our observations with theory now? The gravitational radius can also be calculated by the ring diameter that we measure in our images, but with a scaling factor that reflects all these physical processes that I mentioned. Yeah. Now we need, we have measured by the fixture extraction analysis, we have measured the, the diameter of the ring for our observations, but we need now to determine from the theory the alpha to do the what is, uh, uh, is so known of about uh, as alpha calibration. So for this reason, we are uh, we creating a, a we generate a library of uh, uh, general relativity magnet uh, GRMT simulations with different spins, uh, different values of spins, different uh, 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 electron temperature uh, prescriptions. Uh, uh, inclinations and so on, so creating thousands of uh, of uh, simulations. The next step is we take these simulations and based on this we create for each and every one a UV data set, a data set that creates the, uh, as uh, the, Teresa mentioned, this the array would observe uh, if the, the black hole was described by these parameters. Then we take each one of these data sets and we must, as Rohan mentioned, with all these five the five methods. And next, as Mariana mentioned, we applied all this picture extraction process again to it and everyone. And from all this process, we are able to, to we compare with our um, uh, observations and we are able to deconstrain the, the alpha parameter, which is, uh, uh, which is typical in this range and we uh, we compare it with the data, but so we have sorry. Uh, so <laughs> now it's not gonna happen. Yeah, perfect. So uh, we have obtained the theoretical alpha uh, parameter, but the photon ring that we see. It's, uh, uh, it agrees, but with the observation, but from the simulations, the observations are slightly larger that the, than the simulations that uh, uh, tell us that we need to expect 
from a black hole with these parameters. And so we know that we have also a 10% uncertainty uh, uh, of, <clears throat> of all this process because my many uh, quantities are, the, are uh, contribute to this analysis. So uh, for this, again, we need to keep our mind that the ring that we see is a blending of uh, individual rings. So we need higher fidelity images in order to distinguish, uh, for instance, the N1 ring, which is the uh, well defined by general relativity and understand its contribution. For this, all this analysis that I saw you is uh, it was based for the 2017 data. For 2018 data, we are gonna do the same. And in order to reconstrain uh, the alpha parameter for, for this uh, data set. However, because of the consistency, uh, because of the consistent diameter of the ring with 2017 observations that we see there, we can already have a, a teaser of what we should expect about, uh, uh, about mm -hmm. the, the gravitational reg reg 2018 data. So here you see uh, from the different, uh, the consistency for, uh, for starters of the, the, the gravitational radius between its, uh, its um, uh, imaging method. Uh, the error bar is 86% uh, the contingency interval. And the black squares are the 2017 data. So if we remember, the gravitational radius is also a function of black of the mass of the black hole. So uh, constraining accurately the gravitational radius gives us the opportunity to also measure the black hole mass. For so back to 2017, we used our observations and we calculated the mass based on the gravitational radius and we compare it with uh, independent mass uh, measurement methods. For instance, here for M87, we have the, the, the estimation from, we have the measurement from uh, the stellar dynamics, the motion of the stars around the, the black hole, the gas dynamics, which is the red, the red line, and uh, our observations assuming that we are dealing with a, a supermassive black hole that, uh, that is, is, is rotating, it's a care, it's a type uh, of, uh, it's care type uh, black hole. And the ESD observations agreed with the stellar dynamics measurement, independent measurement. So this gives us a, a actually practically gives us the confidence that the, 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 the piece of information that actually M87 is a care black hole, is, uh, is rotating has spin. So uh, the, in the next uh, few months, we are gonna have a follow, we're gonna publish a follow, following up paper with uh, uh, more carefully constrained all these uh, uh, all these parameters that I tell you already, but we already uh, we know uh, kind of know already that uh, uh, we have a very accurate measurement. Sorry. So, and then we pass to as Mariana mentioned, we pass to the uh, another uh, difference that we saw with 2017 data, which is the, the M87 position angle. So here we see a simulation of, uh, of the, um, uh, the, the plasma, uh, the, the material around the black hole uh, uh, accreted to the, uh, to the center. So, and from this simulation, we see that the changes in the brightness and, uh, and the position are the match with the changes that we see in our observations. And these changes are, uh, uh, are uh, assigned to, uh, as we said, to the astrophysics, to the N1 ring, to, um, uh, to, to the temperature of, uh, of electrons and so on. So, uh, but now what we wanna do, and we need a higher, uh, we need to, to be able to see higher uh, order rings is to distinguish the contribution and quantify <laughs> as accurately as we can the contribution of its, uh, of its parameter in order to understand better and test uh, further 
the, uh, the GR. And we know, ah, I'm sorry, I need to tell you. No, okay. But for the large scale jet, we know already that uh, it's, it's precessing. We are dealing with a precess, uh, with a, uh, a black hole that is precessing. And we'll, this uh, effect will also, is also play a, plays a role for the uh, positional, most probably for the positional changes that we saw in, uh, in our data. Uh, between 2017 and 2018. And now Jose Luis is going to tell us about the future and uh, yeah, see what, what is next. Thank you very much, Cecilia. I think I'm going to use this. OK, so th this is just the, the last slide. So first of all, thank you very much for all the presentation. I think this had, I hope you, had, you got a nice uh, overview of uh, how we do this and, and our contributions. I'm going to just finish it by commenting some of the the future results that you may be expected from the HD. Uh, as, uh, as they have been mentioned in uh, <coughs> Talia and Rohan and so on, uh, this is the observational paper from the 2018 data. Uh, we are just uh, finishing up uh, the, uh, the theory paper and we are going to submit this uh, very soon uh, with the, our new analysis for the theoretical interpretation of uh, the black hole in 97. And uh, we actually just submitted also a paper uh, with the polarization analysis of the of the side J of the, of the black hole at the galactic center. I think this is going to be one of the most effective results from the EHD because, as you know, uh, in 2020, uh, the confirmation of the existence of a very compact object at the galactic center was uh, recognized with the Nobel Prize in, in physics. And uh, so now we are going to tell uh, about what is the actual physics, uh, the magnetic field in the galactic uh, center. And uh, we are uh, one of the most important projects in which the EHT is now embarked is the uh, dynamical imaging of black holes. We want to make the first movies of black holes. And I'm very happy to report that the uh, old group is leading the effort uh, uh, of the EHT into getting the first movies of black holes, something that was initiated by the, the pioneering work uh, by Antonio Fuentes here in the house. And uh, we are going to have a workshop in which many of the uh, um, uh, researchers from the EHT are coming to Granada. And this is going to be uh, at the end of February. And uh, we will uh, discuss all the progress uh, for making movies of black holes, and in particular of uh, side J. We also want to make a time sequence images of M87. And of course, uh, we want also to get the first detection of the M87 together with the, with the ring, with the EHD data. And, but this is just uh, in the next uh, few months, in the next year. In the long term, uh, we, what you have seen is that actually the second observations of the, uh, of the EHT of M87. But we too also took observations in 2018, 2021, 2022, 2023, and we are going to take observations in a few weeks from now. And uh, we have been keeping, uh, we have been improving the array, so you will see the significant improvements in the image fidelity with these new observations. Uh, we are we are also looking for another targets besides M87 and side J, and we have also just submitted a, 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 a big proposal to NSF of about 100 million uh, to in, include the new telescopes in array. And I'm very happy to report that uh, one of those telescopes is going to be in Canary Islands, and this is going to be managed by the, by our institute. Uh, and uh, we are also now discussing with NASA, and uh, months I'm going also to NASA to discuss a new space with the mission. Uh, NASA is very eager to send one uh, antenna to the space to do the first space with the observations on millimeter wavelengths. And with this, we do expect to get the N1 ring. And as Mariana was mentioning, sorry, Protaro uh, and Saria was mentioning, N1 is the ring that tells us about the metric. This is the one that actually tells us how black holes actually uh, work. What is the, the actual metric of the space-time in this object, of whether it's a, a curved black hole or perhaps it's something else? And N0 is the one that gives us all the astrophysics. Uh, it's very important for astrophysics, actually, because this is the one that tells us how black holes actually accrete material and how we can extract energy from these black holes and produce these amazing jets of material. So in the long term, as I mentioned, our final uh, goal for the EHT is to get uh, this uh, ever precise, more refined test of GR. And we do expect to get this in the next year with the next generation uh, generation telescope, as well as with the black hole explorer from NASA. So uh, stay tuned. We, you will see more images of black holes. 
and hopefully the next uh, splashy uh, results are going to be the first movies of actual uh, black holes that are going to be you know uh, brewed and, and cooked here in the house thank you very much for your attention and we are here to, uh, very happy to take any questions that you may have Sorry? Do you want to know? Yeah, well, but it's up to you. No, no, no. Okay. You, you so, do it, and then we questions for the team. I am. Am, am I able to make a question? Sure, sure. please. <laughs> okay. Maybe this is a naive question, but where does the light uh, come from? The photons. I mean, what is the physical process that gives rise to the photons that are uh, deviating? Yeah, that, that, yes, indeed. Indeed, this is an excellent question. Do you want to take it, Cotardo? Uh, like... Yes, I, 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 sorry. Could you say, say again? Perfect. What is the source of photons? So the, the what heat. is the source of the photons? Where do the photons come from? What is the physical process that gives rise to them? That's a great uh, that's a great question. So thank you so much for the question. So um, typically speaking, there is a two main uh, origin of the of the photon ra photon radiation. First is the uh, the accretion disk uh, in the vicinity of the black hole. So both Sagesta and the ML87 has uh, uh, as a radiative thing accretion disk around the black hole and which uh, which is captured by the event horizon so which is which is the main uh, candidate for the uh, radiation component and the second one is as we show in the uh, in the multi frequency observation m87 has a quite strong jet component which also uh, uh, which is also another uh, main radiation origin for the uh, for the both black hole shadow and jet component while I suggest that is not uh, possible. It, it is not uh, detected currently as a jet component, but uh, perhaps, perhaps we may have a, a little small jet component in the vicinity of the black hole. So, uh, answer to your question is uh, both accretion disk and the jet component will uh, provide the, uh, the main radiation of the photon. Okay. Is okay. It... <laughs> Thank you. There is a question on the chat. Mire Perez Torres asks, what is the time scale for the construction and fusion of the antenna in the Canadians? Ah, I think I can take this one. Thanks, thanks a lot, Miguel, Miguel for, for this question. Uh, we have submitted the, the proposal now, uh, and we will know about the proposal uh, more or less in 2025. Uh, if the proposal is accepted, we will start uh, building the and then the four new dishes. One, as I mentioned, is going to be in the Canary Islands. Another one is in Chile. Another one is in Mexico. Another one in Wyoming. Uh, the the first one is going to be in uh, uh, simultaneously in Canary Islands and in Wyoming. So we expect that we will start building the telescope uh, uh, sometime around uh, mid 2025. So. so uh, and it will take probably one, two years or three years uh, after completion and commission and, and so on. So we do expect that uh, this is going to happen in the next uh, four to five years. Okay. Okay, there is another question by Miguel Perez Torres. Okay. What specific uh, general relativity test are you aiming at to address? With the current EHT and which uh, ones cannot be addressed now that you will address? Yeah, that is an excellent question indeed, uh, uh, Miguel Angel. So, uh, uh, with the EHT, uh, what uh, we can do now is is, uh, is we can go uh, up to 345 gigahertz. So, we will increase a little bit uh, the angular resolution. And uh, but uh, in order to actually uh, get uh, the uh, um, very reliable. Uh, movies of black holes and uh, uh, and to be able to observe sources which are significantly dimmer and, and observe uh, other sources beyond M87 and, and SIJ and start doing some statistical analysis of black holes and black hole demographics and so on. This is the only this is the thing that only the NGHT will be able to do. And we think that with the NGHT, also by studying the studying the polarization of the N1 green, we will be able to actually determine, get a very accurate determinations of the of the of the spin of black holes. So this uh, what we are aiming in the future is to get uh, 
spin that uh, determinations to the increase the essence the the um, uh, fidelity or or, or in, uh, the to provide uh, to uh, to get a, a more accurate taste of uh, GR and uh, and to study the black hole demographics and this is our, the, these are the main uh, scientific uh, um, uh, goals of the NGHT. And with the Black Hole Explorer, the Space Baby mission, and I think this is going to fly more or less at the same time as the NGHT because NASA is really very eager. We had a meeting in, the, in, in Washington uh, four months ago, and we are having another meeting uh, in mid February in, in Nashville. Uh, the uh, NASA is very eager to, to send this mission. And uh, I think it may be flying in three, four years from now. And uh, most of the technology is ready, especially the 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 um, the, the laser communications, uh, which are needed for the high uh, bandwidth that we are expecting. And with the NGHT, we do expect to see N1, and very clearly to send to see N1. And with N1, we will definitely determine whether uh, these uh, objects are, are really described by by care or that there is any deviation from the care metric. Can I ask? See. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, in addition to the energy uh, EHT, year scale observation may help us to constrain the general as uh, a black hole space time. For instance, we obtain today we obtain the uh, position angle difference of the photonic morphology, but which also depend on the black hole spin and the black hole space time. If we uh, focus on the negative black hole spin, the corresponding variation is so rapid, uh, so so fluctuated, and there's a uh, quite a stoch stochastic variability among the year scale. But if we focus on the uh, positive and large spin, <coughs> scale, uh, the corresponding position angle is almost stable. So if we uh, focus on, if we obtain the uh, stable position angle of the MAT7 ring morphology, uh, we may be able to uh, constrain the black hole spin information, uh, not only for NCHT, which is a uh, uh, which is the strongest evidence uh, based on the N equal one. But uh, current uh, continuous EHC is also important to understand the black hole space time. Something that I also like to mention is that if you think about that, that these uh, two objects, uh, SIG and M87, they have been there for millions of years, and they are going to be there for millions of years. Mm -hmm. So imagine what kind of instruments we are going to have, not just you know NGEHT, or, or the black hole explorer. Imagine, you know, X-ray interferometer. Imagine an uh, infrared interferometer to things like that in, in 20, 30, 50 years from now. With these objects are going to be there. So we are going to be, these are perfect laboratories for studying the art. So indeed, in 10, 20, 30 years, we will we will be able to tell whether, you know, there is any deviation from, from the art in this object and whether there is any you know, indication that we can actually uh, get an idea of how uh, quantum mechanics and NGR uh, work in 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 uh, in, in these uh, in these objects. So I think uh, this is just the beginning. As I say, you will see more images of black holes, and of course, many of them are going to look like yeah, another image of the black hole. But uh, this is this is uh, just the beginning of this uh, long-term uh, quest for studying these objects. Okay. So the black holes for mission. Uh, what's the timescale which uh, you expect to uh, descend? Yeah. Uh, ah, yes, yes. This is NASA is very eager to go for this. And now uh, JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency, is also putting money. Uh, they want to do the cryogenics of the, of the telescope. Uh, the, so I think this could fly as soon as in, in three, four years or even less than that. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and But the timing is also very good because you have antennas in the space, you also need a good run array. You need more antennas on, on the ground. So I think the timing is going to be very good for having more antennas on the ground with the NGEHT and then the antenna on space. And, 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 and this is going to be really, I think uh, definitely this is going to be a killer, killer result because for the first time, we will actually see what happens really at the strongest uh, you know, gravitational Curvature of the, of the space time that you could imagine, which is one of these uh, black holes. So we have a question in the room and then another one in Zoom. Yes. Question for Roca. Yeah. Uh, so you talk about, so I know clean, cleaning, right? Yeah. You talk about the difference between clean and other ways to kind of model these data, right? And then you talk about uh, Congrena. Congrena, yeah. 
and many different things. So these are like clean or they are different? No, they are, they are not clean. Okay, I guess I wasn't here. No, okay. uh, so clean is when you go from in the Fourier domain, you have the data. No. It's not the image. But you just take the Fourier transformation and then you go and make the image just by taking yeah. the transformation and just like uh, and then you you know clean. Mm -hmm. But in, in in terms of doing it in like RML imaging, like uh, oh. or, or a base approach, what we do is we do the opposite. We start from some initial image, okay, take a Fourier transformation of that image, and then we do the minimization until finally find a good image. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, this, this was clear. This was clear. Okay. So the all the different and like algorithm i guess that you were showing are different ways of doing that right or like yeah so can... like in rml if you see ESTM and smiley they, they are more or less doing yes. the same thing as as uh, i explained like okay. as a general method I in Bayesian approach when i said there is chemist and comrade uh, they have their own differences but again it's more or less just a Bayesian approach of doing it I see. yes okay. yeah th this is very powerful because with the variation you actually explore everything and you get an estimation of the errors mm -hmm. so this is absolutely fantastic but it's also very time consuming usually you don't i mean if you're working with clean i mean we don't we don't use this because usually for with you know vla data or the things like this i mean you have a lot of antennas so you don't have any kind of these issues that we have uh, with the hd and then you just do a pre-transformation of the image and of the visibility and you get the image and 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 with that kind of amount, that amount of data, for instance, if you want to use one of the variation methods, it could take you one week to get one image. Okay. Oh, it's really it's really overkill because you can imagine. I mean, with with variation method, with what uh, Rohan has been doing, you explore every single image that you could have. So you explore for just to make a you know a final image of just you know the the, the median of the posterior. You explore every possible image that is consistent with your data. So this is really overkilling. I mean, after this, I mean, what you get is what is better. I do want to add one thing though. So if Temis takes about one week to make an image, Comrade can do that in just a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, just saying. <laughs> there, is, there is a question in Zoom. So Anudena Prieto, please yes. Anudena, open your mic up and... Thank you, question. Nice to, nice to hear from you, Amodena. You are muted. Stop sharing. Yeah. No, Amodena, you are muted. Amodena, can you hear us? Uh, I think you are muted. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Maybe it can be typed in the chat. Uh, if you can hear us, Almudena, you can type perhaps. Ah, yes. No. Can you write no. your... Okay. Ah, uh, uh, no, that's you. Yes. Okay. I'm still muted. Okay. Meanwhile, you... any other questions here? Anyone? Not here. Oh, the website word. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. 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 All right. So then, thank you very much. Thank and you, you know where we are. So if you have any further questions, just grab one of these guys and then over <laughs> and we give them. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs>